In the previous video, we learned how to do parallel transport of a rectangle along a wall. In future tutorials, we will see this technique is very versatile and has many applications in spherical perspective. But today, we will see why it works. Recall what we did. We had a wall going left to right, and on it we had a rectangle. Further along the wall, we had been given a point E, and starting at that point, I wanted to draw a copy of the rectangle. Putting it another way, I wanted to slide the rectangle to the right by an arbitrary distance. Let's recall the construction I showed you last time. I took the diagonal of the rectangle and extended it to the right to find the point V where it crossed the vertical that passes over the right vanishing point of the wall. Then I drew line EV. EV touches the top of the wall at a certain point G. If I pass a vertical through E and another through G, this defines a rectangle, and I told you that this rectangle is an exact copy of the first one. The question I left open for you to think about was why this is true. The reason is this. The point V is the vanishing point of line AC, that is, of the diagonal of the first rectangle. If you accept this, then we're done, because the second diagonal line EG is parallel to the first, since the two lines have the same vanishing point V and lines with the same vanishing points are parallel. Hence, if you look at the situation straight on, in an orthographic projection, what you have is this picture, and it becomes a simple matter of Euclidean geometry at a high school level. These two diagonals are parallel lines, and they cross two common horizontals, the top and bottom of the wall, so they cross them at the same angles. And since the verticals both cross the horizontals at right angles, then the triangles are congruent, and so are the rectangles. This is what we wanted to show. So we're done. But again, this all depends on you accepting that V is the vanishing point of the first diagonal. Why is this true? Well, that wall is going from left to right. Consider the plane that contains the wall. It is a vertical plane. Since it goes left to right, then on the horizon it contains the points that go from left to right reference points. That is, it takes up 180 degrees on the horizon. Now, in equirectangular projection, vertical lines in space project to vertical lines on the picture. If a point belongs to a vertical plane's image, then the vertical that contains the point also belongs to the plane's image. Hence, the vertical plane of the wall projects as this orange region above and below the horizon, going from left to right. You can imagine that this region is the set of all verticals that pass on the frontal half of the horizon. Notice that it is a square, 180 degrees wide, 180 degrees tall. This, by the way, is general. All vertical planes project as a square in equirectangular perspective. The only thing that changes is where you put the square on the picture. Finally, we have to consider the following proposition. If a line lies on the plane, then its vanishing points project on the edges of the projection of the plane. Let me repeat. If a line lies on the plane, then its vanishing points project on the edges of the projection of the plane. If you accept this, then you accept that V is the vanishing point of line AC. Why? Well, we know AC is a segment of a line that lies on the vertical plane of the wall. Hence, if we extend the segment, until it hits the edge of the vertical plane, the point where it hits must be the vanishing point of the line. By the way, this would also work in the other direction. There is another vanishing point on the left side of the picture, or to be exact, on the opposite side of the sphere, in the antipode of V. I call it V star in most of my works. The star notation reminds you of the fact that the second vanishing point is across the sphere on the same ray from the eye. 
every line has exactly two vanishing points in a full spherical perspective and they are diametrically opposite across the sphere. This centipedal relation is actually really, really useful and we will see why in future tutorials. For now, I will just say that we could just as well have used that other vanishing point for our construction and it would have worked just as well. Now, I know I'm still asking you to accept a few things on faith, namely, why are the vanishing points on the edge of the plane's image? It sounds plausible, but I haven't proved it. We should really investigate the cause of this, and we will do so quite soon as we circle back to the foundations of spherical perspective. But before, in the next couple of videos, we will try out parallel transport in practice by drawing some examples. I know some of you really want to see the examples uh, much more than the theoretical talk, but this is necessary if you want to understand what you're doing. Before we end, I would like to leave you with a question. Notice that up to now, we just used parallel transport to slide along the wall. We shifted the rectangle to the right. Can you shift it to an arbitrary point X anywhere in the picture? How would you go about it? I expect that you will find this an interesting puzzle to work out. Think about it, let me know in the comments. If you want a suggestion, I advise you to first try to shift it to the left, then up and down, and then when you know how to do that, try combining the two motions. And finally, when you make that happen, try to think of how to do it in a single motion rather than a combination. And if you find the time to write, write me an email, write you a comment, or whatever you want, let me know how that went. Next time, we will do some practical work, so subscribe and I will meet you later with more thoughts on spherical perspective.